the mega log high of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful forever sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness that the man of God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inherent great word of truth glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk in the breath by breath cherishing of the nurturing and the nourishing ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in order to look and to realize if ever it is not in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit if ever we are not been led by the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath to walk in the fellowship of him we shall not fulfill the plan of the Lord our God for which he has sent his dear beloved son and now the dear beloved son is sending this church age believers before the foundation of the world being chosen to be holy and blameless to do the work of apostoli like Christ on this earth and that's possible only by the vicar or the rector of Christ who shall guide us unto all the truth and therefore dear brethren every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if at all is a true believer in the Lord the first epistle of John which has been written for us teaches in 1 John 2 these things I have written unto you because you know the truth not because you haven't known the truth we are talking with the Christendom Christians who have been called to realize that we have the unction of the Lord we have been given the anointing of Lord God the Holy Spirit to be indwelling in us and that Lord God the Holy Spirit will lead you when you are really seeking to search and to find out and to have a right and to fellowship with the Lord and not to go astray by walking the paths of Cain not becoming twice dead like the way have for some greedy lusts Balaam left the track and the rebellion of Korah but in return being available to the Lord's service in humble manner by knowing the truth and understanding and doing what is the will of God the Father in heaven and since we ought to be his strength the greatest words in the Hebrew in the Greek the words of exousia the words of dunamis the words of kratos the words of iskon because of that great our Lord dunamis power given to us we are being called here to reflect that is kun power of Christ and that is kun power of Christ is what we read in 1 John 2 very specifically telling in verse number 13 and 14 since you are young young is cause you have overcome the wicked one what a privilege it is when we overcome the wicked one by being strong by manifesting the is kun strength the wicked one ponorias where we can learn the attribute of Satan because it has constantly failed and it wants even you to be failed therefore no matter however you try it will not make you to overcome because Satan is the origin of all the sin where it wants in your mind to understand and not to give time to the word of the Lord our God and your evolution when it caters to, to say yes to such sin the sin has taken birth in you and the result of that sin a separation from my Lord if you have an unbeliever the spiritual death which is happening to every unbeliever who haven't believed in my Christ if you are a believer in the Lord the separation from the fellowship because we have been given a present active imperative mode of command to be constantly be filled with the spirit at the same time constantly we have been told to partake in the elements of my Lord and as long as he is going to come we shall catalogio we shall announce we shall proclaim we shall teach 
the same catalogio where Apostle Paul was bounded in chains as Philippians 1 verse number 18 whether by pretense or love the truth of the Lord of our God has been catalogio it has been pronounced I'm happy for that and for self-sufficiency of our cure strength my Lord my rock is going to supply the spirit of my Christ what a privilege it would be when we walk in those terms, catalogio, by understanding the present tense, the active voice, and the imperative mood. That's what you have to do it. Not only just looking into the point of being full with the spirit, being controlled of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but at the same time in the partaking of the elements of my Christ. There is no true life as long as you fail to partake in these elements of Christ. Because the greater you reject to partake in the elements of Christ, the greater you don't have true life in you, and the greater you don't have true life in you, you cannot truly separate from the things of this world because you have been tempted all the time. In the terms of the things pertaining to 1 John 2.15, the lust of flesh, the lust of eye, and the pride of life. And what is there in this world? The three things that you should overcome, your own flesh, the cosmos diabolicus thinking of the system of this world, the second one, and the third one, the devil. And we have been said, as per Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, devil and the second death, now the death has no power in you, because in Christ you have been absolutely reigning like an immortal. And Apostle Paul constantly believes in Philippians 1. Until the work of my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my God has been done, I am immortal. What a privilege it would be for us to understand those terms in real life. He believes that he is immortal until the work of my Christ has been executed thoroughly. And by that we mean every believer has a program. Has a program to look the ensamples of the Old Testament saints. The ensamples of the Old Testament saints would be so cheap for us to look, particularly in the negative realm, the way how they walk, not being led by the Spirit of God. And all the mannerism of the lusts of the flesh. But in return, we, have in, have, we even have an ensamples on the posture side. The ensamples of guarding the temple of my Lord. The ensamples where they have been told in Deuteronomy chapter 27 and they have been said, Cursed is everyone if he doesn't keep up this law, if he doesn't do, if he doesn't build up, if he doesn't assay, if he doesn't confirm. And all the people says, Amen. The same thing what our Lord our God says for us in the terms of John chapter 7. When Nicodemus was been an incident of it, haven't you known? And those who haven't known the law of the Lord, they would be said, they are cursed. And quoting to tell why these Pharisees or scribes couldn't catch my Lord and could put him in snare. And they say he was speaking like a man in authority and he was a man of authority and no one could succumb him. But the Pharisees would say, haven't you known the law? The one who doesn't know the law, they will be cursed. In the Gospel of John, what we read. The fulfillment of Deuteronomy chapter 27 when we read. But this man became law oriented lawlessness, but not recognizing the truth of Christ. So the ensample what we read from the Old Testament saints to guard the truth, to look and to be the precious one for Christ is very, very important. So, dear brethren, as we were continuing the talks of Isaiah chapter 8, where we have read. You shall not walk us the paths of these people as they walk, but you shall walk in the paths of the Lord. The narrow gate, the straight gate. And looking upon that, we have been coming to the point to understand, to realize Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. If you have been led by the Spirit of God, you shall not keep the law or fulfill the, fulfill the lust of the flesh. And taking that back again to the terms of Genesis chapter 6, my spirit shall not strive with them. And the point of which we have been read again in First, First, First Peter chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. But in the meantime, pertaining to the church age and to the Old Testament saints, 
quoting Nehemiah 9.30, earlier by the Spirit, by the prophets, he spoke. But the people did not believe, but the people did not follow it, people did not take it to their mind. Because they love darkness. That is what you are, that's what real problem with us. Men love darkness rather than truth. And yet Lord of God has made us in his own image. And pertaining to this kind of catechism of the church age, he has made every believer to be aware that he has to be in the terms of He has to come back to the image where with Christ our Lord of God has made them. And that's what we were continuing yesterday. Why he wants to make every believer to understand his own likeness of the image. Comparing to Ephesians chapter 5, we have read to present to himself, to stand beside him. What a caliber it would be when we are growing up according to the maturity of the standards of Christ. Ephesians 4.13, according to the catarisman process of my Lord. And what he wants to present beside him, the glorious church which should be internally as well as externally our momas without blame which should be holy we should not have any spot we should not have any wrinkle what a privilege we should not have any such thing that goes against the holiness of the lord my god and we are talking about the universal church and for that reason in comparison to the analogy between the wife and husband there the husband tells he is going to provide he doesn't hate his own flesh but is going to provide for that for that flesh that which has been needed and for the church age, what else it has been needed? The plural or polytum of privileges which has been given for us. And among that plural or polytum of privileges, number one, we have to use rebound 1 John 1 9. In the privacy of your priesthood, to look upon the ensamples, how they used to protect the temple of the Lord of God in the Old Testament saints, seeing that no unclean thing could enter into them. Here we are coming to serve the Lord of God with one mind, with one accord, with one spirit. And therefore, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9, we have been said in one language. And that one language means to say for us very purifying and very separation only to the purity. And Lord our God talks to us in that purity of the knowledge of Jesus alone. The communication of the scriptures in the Hebrew and Greek, why we emphasize a lot. The Hebrew word which has been used there for one language of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. The Hebrew word Darar and it calls for us purity, suppression. And our Lord our God calls to us with one language and he tells several times repeated twice in the New Testament through Apostle Paul. In Philippians 1 he comes to tell about one mind and one accord and, one, and, and with one mouth. The same thing he tells for us in Romans chapter 15 verse 6 with one mind and one accord and we come to serve our Lord our God with one spirit. And there also again we look in John chapter 1 verse 18. No man has seen my Lord my rock my God at any time but it is only the one who has come from the bosom and that's what he comes and what does he do he has declared unto you and what did he declare he exegeomai the process and the origin of exegesis in our pulpits which we have to go through and we are not demanded here to walk according to the way the world walks the world loves the lustful patterns of it but the word of the Lord of God of truth should abide in us and what is the truth that should abide in us to overcome the four years of the wicked one? And that is not possible if you go through not understanding the, minds of the mind of Christ in the terms of your translations. It has to be brought into enlightenment into the process of original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Without being proper exegesis, without being proper isagogics, without being proper categories, without being taken the right method of dispensing technique of dispensations in rightly dividing the word of the Lord of our God. You cannot worship our Lord of our God or call upon the name of the Lord my God. It's one language. And with our Lord of our God, the one language is nothing but exegeomai, exegesis. And there will be no happiness to the pastor, neither to the believers who are going to hear this. Therefore, every word of the Lord of our God is so true and so perfect and so specific to explain. And if the minister doesn't walk in those terms, he's no minister for you. He's just a man who has come for you to beg in the terms of his belly. And for that reason, the name of my Christ has been blasphemed, which has to be dreadful among the nations. And you know what the people say? 
The people will say, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30, will be our life. Though they have been warned not to follow the path of the things pertaining to this all sin nature activities of the nations which are earlier, they say, we shall have a good terms there, we shall have a good life there. And you know what they're going to do? The way how they have to be born slaves to my Lord and they have to be the prisoners for my Christ and the Hebrew word Avad calls to explain it in those terms. Where it is a exhilarating service to the Lord of our God because we don't feel that we are born or we are in chains. When we come to tell the word to the Lord of our God we shall serve our Father in heaven it's Avad. And the word we read in Luke 17, verses 7 through 10, but we are unprofitable slaves. That's the word awa. Then we have come here to do that which is our duty to be done. And it's an exhilarating service for us in our entire lifetime to be subjected to be a born slave to the Lord. And we are not worried and we are not feared and we don't at all feel that we are in bondage because in Christ we are set free. And when Lord God the Father has taken care for us, when Lord God the Father will give promises for us to walk according to His path, and whenever we are discouraged it is not God the Father who is going to once again encourage us through his word and we serve such great Lord in the terms of our word. but in Deuteronomy 12 13 we find those men the men who think they can follow the gods of these nations and not the things pertaining to the mind of Christ not walking according to the truth in the word of the Lord of our God. They think they can become awad to such man-made gods with their hands. To such creation of dogmas. By taking Bible as to be the fact but they write fictions, myths, mythologies. Because they have forgot the true mind of Christ. The true revolution which has been given for us under the name of Yahweh Elohim. And what do they want? They want lies. The same thing when we read in Exodus chapter 20. When Moses was been there to speak, the people proclaimed to tell, Moses, you speak to us. Let not, let, let, let not Lord of our God speak to us. Because we are afraid of his presence. We are afraid of his truth. Therefore, God sent a communicator, a mediator. Does not he say, comparing us to be his prophets, comparing us to be his servants, comparing us to be his righteousness? And no weapon that is formed against such, such, such servants of the Lord of our God will ever prosper because these servants of the Lord of our God will have his righteousness. And if at all we have been here to do the righteous work of the Lord of our God, we shall talk and teach of him in one language. And that's what we read in Zephaniah 3 9, the great verse of all time. The same thing written for us in Romans chapter 15, verses 6. The same thing again exemplified for us in the terms of Philippians chapter 1 to teach what it is to come to be with our Lord of our God with one mind. And here we, can, we, we have come here to look the word, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. And the word language is nothing but the pure lips of one mouth, so that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And the word here refers to with one shoulder, with one consent. Therefore, looking back to with the word called as pure and the word called as language, we shall find the word. And the word in the Hebrew goes to be so. Because, dear brethren, without exegesis, we cannot truly understand what it is. Because we going back, without going back to the original languages of the scriptures, we cannot truly understand whether are we serving our Lord or are we serving for our own bellies. This is what the problem many of the pastor teachers are not able to realize. And they are not able to understand the word which has been used for us in the terms of 
purity of the language is barar. I said darar, but it is barar. And the barar meant to say, to separate, to secrete, to single out, to choose, to cleanse, to purify, to polish, to prove, to keep oneself poor, pure, to show oneself pure. The etymology of this word calls for us to understand that the word, though it has been called as barar, it may not have the things pertaining to you. The pure language is nothing but for us in the terms of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. The original languages of the scriptures wherewith we have been written. And without knowing that we cannot truly understand what it is. And many of the people don't even come to wake up what is that barar and what it is that they have to serve over Lord of a God. As we have already noted the word serve which is nothing but awad. And this word awad what we have been read to serve or to make to serve. We cannot serve that Lord if we are not in a pure language. But in the church age we have been said to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit as our only language. What a privilege it is for us. The language where we have been called to be in the communion, the language where we have been called to be in the fellowship of the Lord. And that language is nothing but whenever we come, we ask you to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you could know we are talking and dealing with the things of the heavenly Lord of a God, the supernatural Lord of a God, the jealous consuming fire of our Lord of a God. We are not dealing the things of the society, neither we are dealing with the things of our neighborhood so that we can talk carelessly and worthlessly. We have been called here in Zephaniah 3.9 to serve our Lord our God with one language, with one accord, with one spirit. And what a great thing it is when we know the word for one language is Sapha or Safet. And the word for here it is nothing but it means with one lip, with one mouth, that's what it could be more clear. And long back in when we read in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 6 and 8, we find what is that one lip or one mouth. Anything that is against the truth of the mind of Christ, that's an abomination to my lips. Anything that could be. So how can you tell you're teaching the right word without looking upon the right, right Hebrew or Greek exegesis? How can you teach that you're telling the right truth in your lips because you're not able to understand the dispensing technique of dispensations? How can you tell you're teaching the right word without having the right instruction to know between the post-canon period and the pre-canon period of the spiritual gifts of this church age? How can you do that with pure language? And how are we going to serve him? The word of the Lord our God, what we have read, Awa. What a privilege it is. Dear brethren, if we are not able to wake up to this word called as Awad, and the word which tells for our service to God is an exhilarating experience which does not seem like bondage at all. And those who are saints in the Lord our God in this church age, every believer, take it granted or not, you are being set free from the sin or the bondage of this world. And you have been made to become bond slaves to Christ. And if you are not serving him in a pure language, to call upon the name of the Lord of a God. The Hebrew word barar, to separate yourself. To purify yourself. To certainly take your thoughts into the original languages of the scriptures. And in return, if you're not able to find time, ask for the Lord of God to provide you time to look and to seek and to search the true things of the mind of Christ because it is better for us to live a day that is of truth rather than to live a century which is of not truth and thinking that we are doing Lord's work because that century years of your work will be burnt off. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, God is my witness for the truth that I speak. He doesn't call anyone as a witness. He calls Lord of a God is a maturomai. And the word maturomai, it meant to say for us, the things what he is speaking, the same reality has been there in the presence of the Lord of a God. And when we shall go back home, we shall look what are those things. And who are going to talk about those things? 
those who are kleptes or lestes or mistotes or tupas or in fact indeed enhupnos. And by that we mean robbers, the three thieves, the hired servants like Balaam who are coming now to the churches or the Tupas, the proud ones who are not correcting to come back and teach the word of the Lord of God day by day in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the original isogogics categories and exegesis. Or those idiots who are en hoopnas. The clowns who are entertaining the pulpits. And these clowns are not able to get out because they love the enhupnas crowd, the dreaming crowd. They do not even conceive what is the true spiritual life. They do not even understand what it is for us to be in the day-by-day -day mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says those who are of truth, they will follow. And those who are of truth, they will listen. And the Bible tells those who are of righteous, they will say, Lord, when we have done this. And they would realize they are not doing the work of Christ and they would wake up to realize that they have to follow this truth in Christ. Never to be late than to forego because of the hardness of your heart as the way how Pharaoh did. When the word of the Lord of God says the demands of the mind of Christ and to walk circumspectly when the word says in Ephesians 5.16 Acribos according to the demands of the word of the Lord of God you have to walk. It is not that what you are walking that could make a difference. It is not that what I can tell kneeling down hundred hours and tell Lord I have done this. No, it is what the demand of the mind of Christ is and it will train us for his glory day by day. And for every believer with one language they have to come. In the uninspired languages we are having our Bible. But the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher has been given for us to learn about it to know about it, to understand about it, so that we have been shown a specimen for us in, in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, as in the boldness of Parishia, our Lord of God triumphed by showing forth. So he has triumphed for us even to show forth the pattern for the pastor teacher in Luke 19.47 throwing them out and daily teaching the word of the Lord of God. He has shown forth for a believer a pattern how he has to walk as a chapter 50 verses 1 through 4. Day by day, morning by morning, wakening upon wakening to go and listen the mind of Christ. He has shown in boldness the pattern how we have to preach when he prays for us in John 16, 25 that we are no longer here to talk about in the terms of parables but the hour has come when we need to talk in boldness, in parousia, not parousia or the rapture, but Parishia, P-A-R-R-E-S-I-A. -R -R -E in boldness of the truth of the heavenly things of the Father in heaven. And that boldness of the heavenly things he substitutes for us in Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. During that time the disciples were dull to hear. And now the disciples or the Christendom, Christianity, what we are going through, are not even waking up to hear that they have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In fact, indeed, they are no believers if they are not able to realize that they are the temple of my Christ. And they are no true believers if they are not able to understand that we have been clothed with the new clothes of Ephesians 4.24 and Colossians 3.10. They are not able to understand about that. And they think they are doing Lord's work. And they think they are considering Lord's truth. And when John has been written, or the first epistle of John has been written for us, those who have known the truth. And today, rather than seeking and searching the truth, the men are following the terms of Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30. It's a great pain for us to look. That which has to be right and perfect in the sight of the Lord of God has been replaced by the mind of this man who love to add something to the scriptures and who love to diminish from the scriptures the truth. The sad part, the translations like NIV and other things which have come up, 
They have deleted some of the verses as well and the people love to take them because they don't want to face the truth. And there are many men who want to promote the reverse standard versions, yet we can find some truth in the King James Version at least. And they don't love to take King James Version as their life. The King James Version, though it has some anachronism, it is able to represent the accuracy of the translation to some extent. But even in fact, indeed, we don't rely upon the King James Version. We, don't, we have to go back to the original Hebrew because we find many errors in the translation of Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 23 as well. The King James calls justice, but in the Hebrew it's satkeno, which is nothing but righteousness. When Yahweh Elohim blesses us, or baraks us, we have an habitation of righteousness and justice, which is nothing but the two cherubs on the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the holiness of the Lord. And if every believer now is a temple of my, of the, of the, of my Christ, and the Ark of the Covenant for you, the Shekinah glory, the two cherubs, the righteousness and the justice of the Lord, where it says, if one demands, the other has to execute, then certainly, According to the demands of the word of the Lord our God, every believer would be righteous and holy. And when this holy ment of crowd will form a group, they are called as a mountain. And that mountain will be of the holiness of the Lord. And in simply, our Peter writes for us, as is holy even so you ought to be holy. There is no excuse for it. But in the KJV, we find the word justice. But in the original Greek, original Hebrew, it is righteousness of Yahweh Elohim. And you know what are we talking? If you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit never you will wake up to that fact. And people think, what is there for us? Let us go weekly once to the church. What is there for us? Let us do like the other gods, what they're doing. And the mindset of these people who do not even know which what lot or with love with, with what mannerism of a lot God they're dealing with. They are just happy to pass down. He demands such and such things, we shall do such and such things. That's it. And they come weekly once and they want to pay monthly once tight. And who are these people who have trained them in those terms? the negligent oriented men in the Christendom. When we find in Exodus chapter 12, the Passover of the Lamb, and the thing that should not be kept till to the morning but should be burnt off, and the thing what they have to besides putting door, besides putting upon the doorpost the blood of Christ, representing through that Lamb, it says for us very specifically, they shall roast that meat and eat. It is not just like the ordinary sufferings, what the people think. Oh, my Christ has gone through like other criminals which have been executed on that, on that, on that, on that Goliath or the cross. His vicarious sufferings are far known. Many of the people do not even know what he has gone through, the pain and the agony of the three of us. Fulfilling Isaiah chapter 53. And here he tells it should be roasted. By that we mean it is not just boiled, but roasted. If the roasting can go for 212 degrees centigrade of Fahrenheit, we find the roasting will go in the fire for 300 degrees of Fahrenheit. And many people don't even understand the minute descriptions in the mind of Christ, which has to be kept so pure, so pure to my law. He has, he has ordered us in every manner how to follow it, how to take it, how to make it. Therefore, in this church age, he tells for us, be in the fellowship of flood, get the Holy Spirit breath by breath. And that's what the congregations today don't understand. The Christendom congregations are compromised. The breath by breath fellowship of flood, get the Holy Spirit to be calling themselves as plural or, or being filled. If at all, they can gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in their emotional ecstasy being called as tongues, the blasphemous tongues. A sign of warning from AD 40 to AD 70, AD 30 to AD 70, the 40 years of evangelism to the Jews is now being taken care of by the Angashtamutas demon among the minds of these Pentecostal crowds. 
and they don't even search the scriptures diligently to know what is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah verses chapter 28 and yet they say we until as we speak in tongues and they say we lay our hands on the empty minds they speak in tongues they're not been baptized in the Holy Spirit of God what a shame it is and dear brethren even in such minute things and the minute things what they think weekly once an assembly of the church and not rigorously waiting in the presence of my Lord to know the true life, to love the true life of Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. Day by day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, waiting at the doorposts of the mind of Christ and Proverbs chapter 8 represents the mind of the Lord of our God long back, what he intended for this world, what he intended how to establish the earth. Proverbs 8 verses 27 through 29. Furthermore, teaching for us than the pure, pure gold or fine gold more than that. You have to have the mind of Christ in you to be desired. The people are running around to look upon the pure gold or fine gold to be in a treasury of their heart of this life. The life that they're going through on this earth, I don't deny that you need to, you need not have that, but not at the cost of having Christ to be second. Not at the cost of having my Lord to give in least priority weekly ones and change the systems to weekly ones. And the shepherds like thieves, like the hired servants, they wait upon the congregation, those are earning such money and they want to take a part of it and they say the tenth part, please pay for us. Because Lord has blessed you, we prayed for you, we did this, we did that. <laughs> if at all lord our god want to bless that man he's going to bless him because of the because of the righteousness of christ being bestowed upon him and in honor to resp to re to respect that righteousness lord god the father is going to bless him it is not by you because you have prayed because you have wept because you have knelt because you have fasting but indeed the bona fide gifted pastor teachers or who are the bondslaves of the lord or who are the servants of my christ who know the will of God the Father in heaven, if at all they want to pray, they will pray like Apostle Paul, enlighten their inner eyes to know the truth. Make them to be like Apopidipus, though it was an eye unto death for him, but he, want, he wanted to pray. And he went to do the service in my place. And they will pray for the things pertaining to Philippians 1, to be filled in all mannerism of the fruits of righteousness of Yahweh Elohim. And they will pray for the special labor and the pain that the pastor teacher is taking so that they want to ask them to pray in return for them so that they could reveal to you without having any thought of doubt the entire mystery doctrine of the church age and for a convenient time how they have to arrange. If it is at morning 6 o'clock your job and you are not able to make up, ask them to come at morning 5 o'clock or morning 4 o'clock. Come and listen the tapes. If it is in the evening, they are not able to wake up till night, nine o'clock, make them to understand the tapes and give them the tapes because, if, because just for one man cannot change the times, but at least take a regular course of your direction of your life from, from, from morning till to the evening, whenever you have your time, from evening seven to eight, you can take the Bible classes. And the people don't understand how to regulate their time, but they're cunning enough to regulate their time for the things that they need to do in their life. But when it comes to the point of Bible doctrine, they will say, tomorrow we shall go, day after tomorrow we shall go, and you will pay for this at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brethren. Whenever you ignore and give number two priority for my Christ, making at the cost of that, you will make earn a fine gold, a rich gold. You will pay for that because you are loving death and hating my Lord. And those who hate my Lord, says the scripture in Proverbs 8, 36, they shall love the death. And that's why we find many people being weak, being sick. Until to the point of death, says the scripture for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Why they are? Because they haven't sought the right mind of Christ. When for us in the minute details of Exodus chapter 12, when we read, even that has to be roasted and the leftover thing should not be kept, but in return should be taken to the point to burn, to, to burn off. Even those minute details will differentiate for us the sufferings of Christ, what he has gone through on the cross. 
powerless. You can think today you can compromise. Do you know why he has gone through that sufferings and teaching for those Israelites over a long period of 1500 years? Because to purchase you and me in Christ. And since we haven't learnt about the things pertaining to the Old Testament ritual practices, he says, take them as your own sample, take a detailed study on that. Now, no longer the sacrifices, because once and for all paid on the cross. In the millennium, when we run about the second sacrifices, we shall discuss them whenever we have time after we read about the millennium. And the priests of the order of the other kites, how they come. And the new temple which will be built. And how the people will think. And the times to realize he is such a man, he is such and such, because he is believing in the post millennium and he is such and such. Or pre millennium, sorry, not post millennium. And he is waiting for the rapture to happen yet. What the mind of men think, I don't, I don't even worry about it. I am worried what the Bible says. I am worried where the voice in such wilderness of Christendom today, like a roaring lion, has to be made known to every believer the truth of the Christ. And whether it has been made known or not, your denominations, your teachings, your understanding, not to be with one language, that's what Zephaniah 3 9 says. Not to get to serve our Lord with one consent, with one shoulder. It's purely because you have gone a failure in exegeomai. And therefore you find many denominations, therefore you find many churches according to their cults. But the church of the word of the Lord of God says in Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 11. The much variegated wisdom or the much manifold wisdom of my Christ has to be made known for you in the church. And to Lord of a God glory in this time, because we have been given greatest privileges of the highest and the best greatest opportunity. And yet you find not even to be like Neos, the new man, but you want to love to be like the old man, Kainos. And what is that kainos you want to prove? Not the kaine of kainiketesis, but Cain. The first one who has been born. And afterwards we read when Lord gave Seth. The first one Cain, what he was. We can, we can certainly take him to the point to tell that his heart was not right in the sight of the Lord of God. Just like the way how casual he was, so are today Christians. We can call them, including the so-called false pastor teachers who do not have the right burden of the Lord of a God in daily teaching the mind of Christ. No matter how great the followers may be to them, no matter how great their ministry be to them, if they are not fulfilling the primary object of the church in daily renovating the standards of the thinking, in fact, even indeed, in Second Corinthians 11, Apostle Paul tells, besides his suffering, he tells, I am not worried about that, I am worried what they are teaching in the church day by day, the men in my care to the church. And if the church has not been teaching for you in the daily pulpit ministry of the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher day by day, the right word of the Lord of our God, you think they are lost. They are not the right pastor teachers. They are the false pastor teachers to you. And what the word of the Lord of our God teaches for us? The way their heart is not right, like the way how Cain was. And this is the way half the world is running. The first one which has been there in the flesh, the neos, that's what we want to talk. The neon flesh, the first Adam. And the offspring of the first Adam was nothing but Cain. And what was this Cain? He was a man whose heart was not right in the sight of the law. Today the church is running in the terms of the minds of this Christendom elders who are like first Adam and who are producing pastors like Cain and their sacrifices have not been accepted and we find the second Adam, my Christ and who were been set for us after Seth they went along to call the name of the Lord 
And how did they call? Bible teaches us pure language and serve the Lord with one consent. The word para, barar, followed by the lips of every believer to be with one mind, with one accord, with one mouth. And to serve my Christ with one consent. What is that one consent we have? The one consent, what Apostle Paul says for us in Philippians 1, or Colossians 1.24. The part of my sufferings that I could pay to the church. Not the sufferings of the vicarious one of my Christ on the cross. But the mental agony of him to take care of this church. And the mental agony for us which has been given for us to look every believer to be perfect and complete in the sight of the Lord. And not to become slaves to this old sin nature. But in return become the mind of Christ to be reigning in their thoughts. And not to add anything to it, neither to diminish something from it. But to make it for us as Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 20, 30 verses 30 teaches to us. Take heed. And the word, when we have been reading it in the terms of exegesis, Shamir. And the Shamir tells careful attention which was paid to the obligations of a covenant to be kept. And therefore Deuteronomy 27 teaches to them, Cursed is the one who doesn't keep the law, who doesn't make the law, who doesn't assign, confirm the law. And what do we find over here? Shamer to God. The same thing what we find in Proverbs chapter 8, Shamer. Take heed that you come every day to the mind of Christ. The world doesn't love the truth. The world hates my Christ. And if you are hating to come every day to the mind of Christ to learn the word of truth, you are not of my Christ, but you are of this world. And though you may be a believer, and if you don't get to the demarcation to understand the righteousness that has been put upon you as a new man clothes, and if you don't walk according to the truth, you are also being taken care in the terms of this earth. And you will not fulfill the goal of the Lord of God upon your life. Why we yell every day? Because of only one reason, dear brethren, the greatest privilege and the opportunity given for every individual believer in Christ. Every believer has been called to reach MGG, not certain few. Every believer has been called to walk in the straight gate. The land of the lentils, what we have read during the time of King David and where his workman who has been there as a great warrior, he says, how can we let go the land of the lentils to the Philistines? We cannot let go. And he fought and he took it. And he was been accounted as a mighty warrior to the Lord. Today, every pastor teacher cannot let go every believer to the world of this earth where they have been perishing without knowing that their life has to reach MJJ or maximum glorification for Christ. How can he let go every word of the Lord our God without exegeting it? Even they cannot find the translation in the English, we have to go back to the interlinear and we have to learn from it. And the word of the Lord our God has not been given to increase our knowledge. It has been given to make our life mortify according to the deeds of the things pertaining to heavenly realm. For which you have been before the foundation of the world being kept apart. Not just increasing your head knowledge. Making your practical life to make the people to realize the truth. But what is happening today? They are easily let go, the throne which is to be given for them because of the crown being kept with glory and honor upon their head. And every believer, and for every individual believer, my Christ has told, take heed, be careful. The same principle passage what we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 through 16. Take heed as such how you are going to construct your house. If you are not able to construct your house in the terms of the mind of Christ, you are going to lose it. Whether you are going to construct that in the terms of wood and stubble that is left to you like Cain, who bought without having faith, without having his heart right in the presence of the Lord of a God. 
The people may think how it is. How could Lord be partial to accept the things of Abel and not the things of Cain? He is an omniscient Lord. He knows very well what you are thinking. He knows every motivation behind your thought. Every imagination behind that motivation of your thought. Therefore, David wants to his son Solomon in First Chronicles, be aware with the Lord whom you are dealing with. He is not like just these gods of this earth, who are deaf, who are dumb, who cannot see, who cannot hear, who cannot talk, who cannot perceive. You are dealing with a true living jealous God, be aware of him. He doesn't give his name and the glory to any other. He is a glorious, consuming fire of all Lord of God. And he is such a glorious, consuming fire of all Lord of God, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. He doesn't even share his glory to be taken in the lips of those believers who think they are also worshipping my Lord, but not with one mind and one mind. Not with one spirit of Yahweh Elohim and not with one mouth of the righteousness of Christ. He doesn't share even with them because they are grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And Lord of God has no work with them who lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who grieve the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who squelch the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And you can say, how? Because by your thought, what I did, you do have sin in you. And you think you can go to the pastor who can confess for you. And he says for you, you pay such and such things. You do some charity works. You do this, you do that. He's making your condition to be more worse. Rather than coming into your mind to confess of the sins, what you have done before the presence of the Lord and get back into his fellowship. Change gets conflicts, dear brethren. The truth will certainly hurt, but the truth is truth. We cannot do anything for it. The same thing what Moses was being told, and Zephorah called him a bloody, bloody husband. Because the thing which was being told to circumcise, he did not do it, and he was being taken till to the point of his death. And how true it would be by a stone cutting out to make circumcision for his second son. Even Moses was not being spared. Far less we can think. We can get along with our things of the mind and we can say, Lord, we will do this and we will do that. And for the second failure not to honor Lord's word among the congregation, he was being said, you shall not enter into the land flowing with milk and honey. A man who led through the Lord of a God into the land where they could enter now and giving instructions in the Deuteronomy chapter 12 the same man was being said no you cannot and Lord took him off until now they did not even know where is the burial of Moses except the contention what we find in Jude verse 9 but that's a different one but here what we are talking, we are talking that if you don't confess your sins, whatever it may be, either by thought, what I did, and if you can think you can cover your sins by giving some food to the poor man, by making some charity, by making some XYZ reasons, the pastor is guiding you for lies. The pastor is not asking you to have right and true fellowship with the Lord. Neither in his lifetime he will make you to have right and true fellowship with the Lord because you are paying money to that pastor and thinking that if you give him money, he can pray on behalf of you. But remember over here, we have been given the privacy of the priesthood to confess of our own sins. We have been given why the privacy of our priesthood so that no unclean thing should enter into the church or the temple of the Lord our God where the Shekinah glory of my Lord dwells in you. And we have been given the privacy of our priesthood to learn the word of the Lord our God without having any excuse. Every believer have to reach MGG because of Ephesians 4.13 of the Greek word katarisman. And every believer has been made to be perfect to meet the standards of the maturity of Christ according to his stature. What Christ our Lord our God could think, what Christ our Lord our God could think in the terms of his family, in the terms of his relationship, in the terms of his responsibility towards God the Father in heaven. And the details of life with the mind of Christ, with Bible number one priority in our hands. 
the peace what we find to enjoy in the details of our life your wife your father mother your property those things are far 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 better than what the earthly people can ever imagine the peace what you find the joy what you find when you put number one priority to the lord and you can't even understand what it is so the people who fail to guard to come every day to the mind of christ they are the people who are making their own self or in the terms of their own mind they're conceiving death and they are playing at the cost of their life enjoying the world and the flute being played or the music being played by satan they are marching into the terms of death satan doesn't want you to know the truth neither it will ever make you to understand the truth neither it will get your mind to realize what is the truth because satan knows very well if you know the truth the truth will set you free and Satan knows very well if we can tell to the conditions there is a wind of breeze in this step we cannot listen we cannot see the face of so anger telling all the time so what and Satan causes your mind is a one hour of tape how we can listen no problem that's how Satan diverts your mind not to give number one priority to the truth and we find in John 18 38 to teach those who are of truth will hear my voice that's enough we are not answerable to these things where we could be telling you should listen you must listen that i can tell to my wife but not to the people of your own volition because wife is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and i cannot tell to others and if you are interested you can listen if you are not you can get out that's very simple logic but at the judgment seat of christ you have to know those who have failed to take heed to God so that lest you could be trapped and the word for 2nd Timothy 2 24 through 26 power adventure if ever you could come back if not according to your own will you shall be taken into the snare of Satan and here we find take heed or God lest you shall be trapped for adventure you shall be trapped the nakash to catch to entrap with the noose like the one who is hanging himself if you neglect the mind of christ to daily learn the word of the lord our god you are entrapping yourself with the noose hanging yourself if you are not able to realize that the mind of christ has to be taught every day and the mind of christ is number one priority for us to learn every day and if you ignore that to come and fulfill Proverbs 8 34 day by day in the presence of the Lord of God to learn the truth you are entrapping yourself with the noose you're hanging yourself because you don't love the truth and those who hate the truth will love death but those who love the truth will love life and they know and the power of the true life for which they have been kept alive rather than making their grace of God in vain they would come to seek more grace and to fulfill the work of a king for example the uninspired word what we have to write for the first time the second time you need to write in the Hebrew Greek and Aramaic the third time in the original languages followed by the things pertaining till to the eighth time the second time when you're writing you're writing through the internal years and you will learn to the Lord of our God to give you more grace, more energy, more strength. To make our ways path of our Lord of our God to be more straight. But the pastor teachers who are now oriented to become like canes. And they think their offerings will be accepted to the Lord. But no, it cannot. Apostle Paul set forth a pattern for us to daily teach. In one place he was three years, in another place he was two years, in another place he was one year. Paid rent with his own hands and he was teaching daily. And he tells, I imitate God the Father in heaven, so you imitate my standards. But who are I imitating now? Don't you want to bruise Satan under your feet shortly as Romans 16.20 teaches to us? And yet you love not to do that.
that bruising is right now in the church age our master our lord has bruised it on the cross and it is the work of every believer to reach mgg and bruise it out under your feet shortly says the scripture and since we find kyan oriented false pastor teachers in the terms of enhupnas who are none other but brute beasts and this man they think they're doing lord's work but you haven't understood that this man they're not doing lord's work but in but in return like brute beasts and the word is very specific brute algia and beasts zwan who are the brute beasts today who don't know that we should worship our Lord, our God in a pure language, with one consent, with one mind. Who do not know the difference between Barar and the translations, what they're finding today in their pulpits. These are the men as good as Alogia. But it is the grace of the Lord, our God, who has provided for us in these translations to know at least some essence of it and provide for us some good, steady Bibles good authors like Schofield, like Spira Zodiathus, like William Kelly, who has written, William Carey, who has done his Bible in our Telugu. And I certainly doubt how many pastors have gone through that Telugu reference Bible to teach. And why they are Alogia beasts, brute beasts? Because they don't love to worship my Lord with one mind and one spirit with one mouth. How happy they are in, in ignoring Lord's work laid down upon their shoulders. How will their offerings be accepted before us, Cain? And how you think Lord will have respect for your offerings or regard for your offerings? Only the pastor teacher who has been there for you to think is guiding you, begging tithes and money, he will have respect. He will regard your offerings, but not Yahweh Elohim, because he deals with only his righteousness and in truth. Therefore he tells, be aware lest you be taken as a snare, as a trap, Nakash. And this Nakash, where many people think, even to be seduced like the way how Saul goes to that witch at Endor. Already he has killed many of the wizards. And there we find the Lord our God did not spoke through the things pertaining for his prayer through Urim or Thummim or prophets. And he goes to a woman now. The woman pastor teachers who think they could be reverent, they could take care of the church, they could lead as church. Indeed, the witch of window Endor did the work what she wanted to do. The sin what he went against, following necromancers. And not obeying to my Lord, it costed him his life the very next day. The witch of Endor we shall cover in one of our days, as Lord our God gives us enlightenment on that, more in that. The women are being seeked when the prophets, when the male, when the Urim and the Thummim, when the Lord is not speaking to them. And how shame it is when Isaiah records when the woman stands and preaches to you. Because the men are keeping silent today. Does not we find in Ezekiel 34 to teach verse number 23, the shepherd of the flock of the Lord our God are men. And many people don't even understand when our Lord our God opens the womb and he gives us a male one that has to be given to the Lord. And here we don't even find the parents aware about the truth in the mind of Christ far less we can tell them in detail the depths of the word of the Lord our God because they say we don't have time for it. No problem. However, the Christian dumb will end up in apostasy and the role what you have paid for it and the role how much you have played upon it 
will be rewarded back for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Not many men to be called to become the pastor teachers. If they don't train up in the terms of the mind of Christ, rather than training in your own terms to conceive that it could be the spiritual life. Therefore, in Isaiah chapter 8, Lord of God said, Do not walk as these people walk. And he disciplined him and he instructed him. And he said, Sanctify the name of my Lord alone. For he alone is your fear, for he alone is your dread, for he alone is your terror. And if every believer doesn't wake up to the vision of Isaiah as he has Raha, as has intellectually seen the glory of the Lord, they cannot be sent like Navims or the prophets or the messengers or the ambassadors to Christ. Because they are failing to meet the Tamim standards, the perfect standards, what the divine of the word of the Lord of God demands. And since they do not even know what are the demands of the divine word of the Lord of God, they cheaply substitute. And that cheap substitution, the word of the Lord of God says, Zephaniah 3.9 cannot be answered, cannot be given to you as a glory. And dear brethren, how many days more you want to get into the terms of Nakash to be seduced, to be sedu seduced after the mannerism of the things pertaining to the way how rituals could be paid to the church. Rituals were there in the Old Testament for us, but in the New Testament we have reality of Christ. The only ritual what we have to partake in the elements of my Christ. And in the Old Testament they had rituals to follow so that now they could learn what the rituals oriented mind by looking upon their ensamples how pure they have to be to Christ. But now the rituals are not being taken care by the things pertaining to the way how they used to sacrifice to my Christ in the temple. But today the world is looking at rituals pertaining to the things which they could go and do to the temples of this world. By that I mean the unbelieving generations. And they say Thursday we will have once, a, once our temple. Some will say Friday, some will say Wednesday, some will say Sunday, some will say Saturday. And what they do there? They go there to do and follow only the rituals and not the truth. The same thing has been found for us in the terms of the mind of Christ, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. The so-called pastor teachers are running the churches like rituals. Sunday once, we shall assemble there. And you know, in my country, India, being a multi-religious one, Friday goes to Mohammedanians, Sunday goes to Christians. And other weekdays, like Wednesday or Thursday, it goes to the other religion gods. And you know, it's a celebration for us of our holidays. When it comes Sunday, a universal holiday like for all the people, but for Christians specifying it. And when it comes towards the times of Wednesday, whichever God they go and worship, again it will be some part of holiday for them. And again coming back to Friday, it's a Mamadinian day, again they get holiday there. And by that time by that time in they work off. And they say, we'll come back after our things pertaining to the prayer that we go. We come back after we go to the temple. And how they're following these rituals? Because they've carefully examined the lustful patterns of the roles in nature to be holy. How to be holy? Holy not to Christ, holy to Satan. If ever they would be holy to my Christ, they would come every day. But they're following rituals, they're searching that rituals. Establishing those rituals in the pulpits today. And it has become a long way, a way of Kayan today. And the word says, Woe unto them who walk in the way of Kayan. And this Kayan will come to give you an offerings to the Lord, which our Lord our God, the Father in heaven, doesn't even have respect for such offerings. And they think we are providing great sacrifices, they think they are providing multiple sacrifices. But what the word says in 1 Samuel 15, 23, very specifically to obey his word is more important. To acribos, to know the demands of the mind of Christ and to do according to that will is more important rather than you go and give multitude of sacrifices. 
The same thing he says in Hosea 4, 6, Hosea 6, 6, Hosea 8, 7, he tells, sowing to the wind, you will reap whirlwind. Why? Because in Hosea 4, 6 and 6, 6, you have failed. The Tavala Lord of God knows that he desires in you only the truth. But you have come here to give the multitude of sacrifices. And since you haven't understood the truth of the word of the Lord of God, you have failed. And what are you doing there in return? Substituting the knowledge of my Christ to the sacrifices of this earth. That's what we are able to find today, the way of Cain, many men who are walking. And they are happy for that. They are coming back to the rituals rather than the reality in Christ day by day, learning the word of the Lord of God day by day, preaching the mind of Christ day by day, in the proper terms of isagogic categories and exegesis with the right truth that they have to explain. Day by day, laboring for the mind of Christ rather than laboring for your flesh or the food which perisheth, rather than for the food which perisheth not. Today is gone, it is gone. How much of your time you have spent in pneumatic cash, spiritually, or suki cash, soulishly, or you have been there like a natural man, the soulish word, or how much time you have been spent in the terms of sarki cash, fleshly. Therefore, what do you say? Weekly, once we go and partake in the elements of the Lord of our God, because we have to be pure. The way of Cain. Satan using the way of Cain. Blinding up your eyes, leading you to lies. But yet, the word of the Lord of our God alone shall reign forever. Our Lord of our God knows to send those right men of his servants who are here to be the prisoners for the law. And this man, no matter what, whether it is his own wife or family, they don't care for that. They say the truth alone. Whether they follow it or not, they want to tell only the truth. Because they are the slaves of the Lord. When we know the incident of Exodus chapter 33, over 33,000 men were been killed on that same day. They don't hesitate to get that change in the pulpit because of the instruction being disciplined by the Lord not to walk as this man walk, not to call their confederacy as a confederacy, but to call what is the Lord's mind to sanctify his name above his word. And that's what in the Old Testament saying, but now to sanctify his word above his name in the present Christendom. And do you know what a privilege it would be? Therefore, when he is alone, our fear, for when he is alone, our, de our terror, our dread. Do you know what a privilege it would be for us? Yet many men don't realize what is the privilege in Christ to serve him in truth. Therefore, they take heed, they become snared, to look as those previous generations or the people who have been taken. And they haven't even understood such standards are been utterly destroyed, they are been exterminated. But yet again they're going to inquire through the necromancy, seek or ask for an order of worship. And that's what they're going to do when the word of the Lord of God has exterminated, utterly destroyed, weekly ones and put for us daily. Yet they go to worship weekly and not daily. And they will demand and desire how they are been to the terms of Awa. And by that word we mean how they are serving. And how they are serving, that's what they want to look and they want to serve at the same time. And they want to tell, this Sunday worship, we had a great worship, many people came. Like the way how in my country, India, the way how the rituals have been followed by weekly ones. And they love to tell, today many people came, we got a lot of offerings. I'm not talking about the Christianity, I'm talking about the unbelievers. Either the terms pertaining to Mahmadinians or the terms pertaining to the Hindus. They say we have a great offering today. They, have, they say we have a great people today for us. And they say that's a great service. No, that's wrong. Every day the congregation has to be filled more than the people who could come on Eve festivals. On the festival occasion of Christmas or the New Year or the festival occasion of Easter. Because it is their life. 
They are thinking they are able to survive in the physical food, physical air and physical water. Much more than that, we are surviving on the spiritual food, spiritual water and spiritual air. And here we are feeding them to get their inner man to be fed. To love the word of the Lord of our God and to hate death. Of course, death is inevitable if it is not by rapture. But till that time, we should be prepared every day as number one priority. As an exhilarating experience which does not seem like a bondage at all. But to Awad, our Lord of our God, not as these nations walk through. But in return, to see that the things pertaining to the mind of Christ will come to pass every day. And as they did Awad and as they did Asa, that's what to keep and to confirm. You shall not be said, you shall not be there to say, yes, even I will do like unbelievers. But you shall be there to say, yes, I will do like my Christ, what he has said for us. Morning by morning, awakening up, going to take the word of the Lord of our God, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 1 through 4. And you should be ready to come to learn the word of the Lord of our God from the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher who teaches to you day by day. Do you know what a privilege it would be? The unbelievers walk weekly once. The believing crowd walks every day. And warn to them who follow the trends of the pastor teachers of a kind oriented ones. Not the kinekitesis of the spiritual church. Therefore, we have been told in verse number 31 Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hateth, what they have done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire of their gods very faithfully. And in Jeremiah 7, he tells, I haven't even got in my mind how the people will think in the times of Israelites that they could sacrifice their sons. But here he says, I haven't even God, therefore I hate them. And furthermore he says, whatsoever thing I have commanded you, absorb. Whatsoever thing I am instructing you, that you shall absorb. And you shall do it. And you shall not add to it anything nor diminish anything from it. If you are not coming in one pure language to worship such great Lord of a God, certainly you shall add many things and remove many things from the real context of the specimen work given for us in Colossians 2.15. Colossians 2.15, wherewith he triumphed, in the terms of Parisia, boldness to tell that he has overcome love everything. And we shall not add anything to it, neither remove anything from it, but with a pure language, with a pure mind, in one spirit, in one mouth, we shall worship such great Lord of our God day by day. And worshipping that great Lord of our God as per John 4.24 demands to worship him in spirit and in truth demands that we be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the privacy of our priesthood given to us to confession of our sins. And when we confess our sins through rebound, 1 John 1, 9, it is not an emotional ecstasy to be filled with the Spirit, but getting into your conscience to realize that you have known, oida, that you have garbage in your soul that is grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that garbage in your soul has to be cleansed day by day. And yes, that many believers don't wake up to such fact. Then remember, the pastors are leading you like the way of Cain, either even the same manner as you are also being led in the paths of Cain by not knowing the truth. If the spirit of the word of the Lord of our God happens to work in you through the truth, it will change you. It will certainly cause your mind to repent. It will certainly cause your mind to think in the standards and the terms of the word of the Lord of our God. And if you are not changing, how hard is your heart not to change to put every day 
pulpit ministry day by day, morning one hour, evening one hour, so that we shall be there to be pure from the blood of your heart. And say, we have not shown to declare the entire counsel of the mind of Christ. But in return, we have hid anything from us? No, but we have taught you from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, with the proper exegesis, isagogics, and categories, in the terms of right dispensing technique of dispensations. And we did not hesitate to do it, or to stop it, but we went along to build and to confirm it, as per the Lord God's work, working in us, in a special labor of agnosomai, wherewith He works in us to the praise of His glory and His grace. But we are only the instruments for Him. We are here only for the instruments of Him. It is He who shall work through us when we are ready to do His will accurately. He can use the natural things. He could tell the stones will speak out if the disciples are not been if the if the disciples have been stopped. When He has kept apart from us the nature around Him, which is traveling to be released from the curse that has been put because of Adam heeding to his wife. When the nature is so ready to do His will, we are being made after His own image and after His own likeness. What is that that is hindering us to do His will? Love not the world and the things of this world. The enemy for you is your own flesh, then the world and the devil. If you are not able to conquer your own flesh, you will never conquer the world. And if you are not able to conquer the world, the cosmos diabolicus of the devil you will never conquer. Neither you will be alert to know, because as Apostle Paul tells, we are not ignorant about the devices of Satan, the cunning fables of Satan. And the greater you are ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan, you will live a life of the world. And never you will wake up to live a life of truth in Christ. The greater you fail to live a life of truth in Christ, the greater your flesh reigns over the spirit. Lusteth. It lusteth to control your spirit. And when the flesh is controlling your spirit, the inner man has been grieved and squelched and lied. But we have been said to be led by the spirit to do his will. So, dear brethren, think over these issues. We have been here to do only the will of the Lord, not the will of this flesh. So think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to understand and to take heed and to guard ourselves, not to walk as these unbelievers walk, in the energy of the mind of their thinking to consume what is spiritual life, but to walk as Christ God the Father leads us in the narrow gate, the straight gate, to know and to learn the unique spiritual life given for us in the kinetic terms, the great kinetic catasis terms, and how thankful we are for the Lord to give such glory. Though we are worthless, useless, reckless men, or wretched men, he cleanses you out at the moment of salvation and guides you to drink milk, to eat bread and to grow up to consume strong meat and to discern practically in your spiritual sense what is right and what is wrong. For that he has provided those modified gifted male spiritual pastor teachers to teach the truth. And the greater you are being taking trap in those things, the greater you make your life complicated but not to understand purely in a plain terms what is the spiritual life. We have come here to serve you, not to be served. Think about these issues as we shall come back and continue to. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself you shall have the eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest man it is to care so thon logan, herald the word in season, out of season, as the witnesses wherewith you have been called. 
The number one diamantrum of witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamantrum of witnesses of our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire and Ghost will be our witnesses. But what is our work? In Parisia, the things pertaining to God the Father in heaven, with boldness, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. We have to be a specimen to this world as a witness, being led triumphantly because of His grace upon us. Not to worry, never to worry about the softies. If you conquer your flesh, the attributes of this world are nothing. The power which has been given to this world by the prince of the power of this air by Satan and its strategies and its tactics and its schemes, even they are nothing. Because you nullify them. After believing in Christ, your inner man, the spirit and soul. The spirit of trichotomous demands only the truth. The soul now from the standards of the righteousness of this world have been changed to the standards of the mind of Christ, which is nothing but the divine viewpoint of absolute righteousness and your outward body now the flesh is prepared to do the works that have been designed for us and kept before the foundation of the world agathe sune divine good rebuking reproofing and now becoming a saint in full terms sanctified and kept apart with the true quality of hagiotes a true quality of true spiritual life being given for us to be without spot, without blame. Not having wrinkle inside and not showing the wrinkle outside. Because we are here to stand beside the presence of the Lord of God as a glorious church. The church which has only the head of Christ. And for that reason he cherishes and nourishes us day by day. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through the word. Father, what else can we ask, O oh Lord, on this earth? As we have said for us in Jephthah 3.9, with a pure language, with one consent, we shall serve thee. Father, help every pastor teacher who is a male believer one, who has been given by thy grace thy spiritual gift, to dwell in the terms of Barar, to sanctify themselves, to make pure, and to come with one lip, the lip of the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And not to get indulged themselves in the translations and get worst. But to return, come back and look unto thee in the interlinear years, what you have given for us. So that they could provide a shoulder of help unto thee and build up thy kingdom on this earth. Father, in truth alone, in righteousness alone. Make every believer to be perfect and complete as you have said for us the duty of the pastor teacher to do it. And the catarismon process to have the same maturity of the stat stature of the fullness of Christ in them. So that Lord, as God the Father has sent you, thy son, so that Father, you, your son has sent us to this earth to be thy apostoli. In each and everything, O Lord, help us to do thy will. And see if there is an offense within us, O Lord, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. And train us up more and more to speak thy truth. And nothing else, only thy truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Fathers. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms.